Hello and welcome to Best for Women Live. I'm your host, Brooke Gordon. It's so lovely to have you join us here. One of the things I'm really excited about is, you know, this whole conversation that we have here on the podcast is around women allies in our network really drawing on their lived experiences, their stories. We're learning from them about business development. We're learning about how they manage stress. And really key to that is the different ways that you can actually find out more. It's not enough to say, oh, you can use a book for business development, but how do you actually do that? And so we're joined today by my friend and expert, Duania Peel. She's the founder of Canadian Small Business Women. She is a multi-time author, and I am so happy to have you here with me, my friend. Hello and welcome. Hi, Brooke. Hey, everybody. My first live of the year. Amazing. Welcome. Mine too. <laughs> Very glad to have you join me. I'm so happy. Like, you're Brooke, so, I mean, it's going to be fun. <laughs> it is going to be fun. I love our conversations. My commitment to us is I'm going to keep us on time because you and I can just keep talking, and then all of a sudden it's like midnight and everyone's still with us. <laughs> We're getting a little heart, heart emojis with that. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love it. So, Duania, I know who you are. Our audience knows who you are. But for those who haven't had a chance to meet you before, can you take a brief moment to introduce yourself and a little bit about Canadian Small Business Women? Well, the first thing I usually like saying about myself is that I love life. I love everything about it. I love the sunshine. I love warm weather. I love wine. Those are the things that really make me happy. I also, you know, on the other side of things, I do love learning and I wear two hats. I manage a lab by day. And then for the past 10 plus years, I've been running Canadian Small Business Women, which I absolutely love because I get to meet a lot of people because I do love people <laughs> all the time. And, you know, we've spent the past 10 years really trying to hone in on what people in the startup realm need. Like, you know, those people who don't have any entrepreneurial knowledge, they don't have entrepreneurs in their family. They want to know how to make their idea into a reality. Those are the group of people we like to help. So we have a lot of programs, a lot of events, a lot of resources that are just for that. Nice and amazing. I love it. That's oh, such a good, so for those of you who didn't catch that, Duania also teaches pitching, which she just did an amazing job at. I love it. So succinct. So for those of you who are listening, make sure you take a moment to drop any questions that you have down in the chat. I'm going to pin that for you. So Duania, we're here to talk about not the network, not network building, not pitching, but writing a book. Yes. Now you are a multi-time author. So what inspired you first to write a book? Well, the first go around, it was more of a collaborative approach for the first two books. And then the other one, the other ones are more journals. And I can say the reason why the first one came about was because I wanted something to keep me busy and to keep me motivated during the time that I was going through chemo and stuff. Cause you know, I could just sit there and be like, uh, I'm tired, I'm going to sleep. But I wanted to feel like I had a purpose. So I decided, hey, why not do something that's going to highlight women in our community? And I really just started learning how to do self-publishing and I went from there. That was the first time around. But while I was doing that, I was also documenting my progress throughout the entire cancer journey. And that led me to writing the second book, actually writing. And that's weird coming from someone who doesn't even like writing an email. <laughs> so when you say author, I'm like, who, me? <laughs> okay. Those of you who don't know Duania well, like literally I get voice notes from her all the time. It is rare that I'll get an email back. And when I do, it's like super formal structured email, possibly from an intern. Yes. <laughs> Love it. Love it. So that was the inspiration. So the very first one was a collaboration. I mean, I love how... 
I, I love that it was to keep you busy during a time when you were at rest, but your mind was active. And then the second time, which is most recently, you've had a chance to really write about you and your journey. So tell us the titles of the books. So the first one now I have to, my, also my memory is not the greatest. The first one was The Power Within, mm. which is inspiring mm. stories of female immigrant entrepreneurs. And that features, I believe it's five uh, Canadian uh, immigrant women entrepreneurs. And the second one was Voices of Strength, which is five stories of Canadian female entrepreneurs. And then the book that I just released last October, that's my story, is called Tomorrow is Another Day. Because I like, you know, I'm a silver lining kind of girl. I will always find the, you know, what am I supposed to learn from this experience? That's usually how I approach things that usually there are people who are like, oh my gosh, why is this happening to me? You know, lamenting over it. But I'm usually going, what am I supposed to learn from this? What is this teaching me about myself? So I'm always looking for that bright side, looking towards tomorrow. So tomorrow is another day. Oh, I love that title. I love that title. I'm going to put a pin in that for just a moment because we got a fabulous question um, from our audience who said, what are some of the common challenges you see in your community? In just the Canadian small business women community as a whole, um, a lot of challenges right now is either time, resources, or finance those are the three things that we keep having because you know a lot of people who are trying to get into entrepreneurship they still have a nine to five and it's how do i carve out the time to do the things that i need to do in order to even start the business and then work on the business not work in the business but work on the business big and to make difference. the business succeed yeah, big difference, big difference. <laughs> yeah and you know financing because right now a lot of the grants that people were getting easier a couple of years ago. They're not that readily available now. So what do you do? Yeah, some hearts coming up to that. And and what's your definition of resources? Because I think this is a really important piece. People talk about yeah, resources so, all the time. What does it mean to you? So it's either online tools that you can use to make your day easier, or it's actual people to help you to do the tasks that you need. And you know. I have this conversation with entrepreneurs all the time where it's, well, I need to find time to schedule things that I need to get done as opposed to, you know, really trying to put the structure in their day and working out the time management and being realistic in the amount of time that you need and not going down random rabbit holes instead of focusing on the tasks that you need to do. And also creating that list of things that you know that you can do and you should focus on and the list of things that you need to outsource because it's going to take up too much of your time or you can't do it and you have to teach yourself okay i really like that definition and i love where you took us because for me resources is people and programs that can help move you forward right i love that you added tools into that and by tools literally we mean like online software um, different things along that checklist, things that can help. But there's another piece that I'm really uh, so guilty of. I took a break over the holidays and I have to migrate my email platform because it's being shut down in three weeks. And have I done it? No. Do have I have known about it for four months? Yes, if not longer. Oh, yeah. So, and, and what do I need to do? I need to schedule the time, but it's more than scheduling time. I need the mental fortitude in the moment when I've scheduled the time to actually do the thing because it's a bit technical it's a bit complicated you can't pay someone to do that and you also need to make sure you start researching other platforms to make sure that you're choosing the right one. Oh, that part's already done it's a micro okay. and they just yeah uh, poorly executed upgrade on their part but so one of the things that i want to come back to is this idea of theme so your first book had a theme of immigrant women canada small business the second one was um i'll say canadian born um yes. small uh, business women with businesses and then the so what were some of the themes that you were looking for because you were curating this amazing 10 women um five in each book and so what were some of the things that you were looking for because really you curated 
this storyline and the journeys that they were going to share. So what was some of your thinking in that and, and were there any challenges that you faced? Well, you know, with the first one, also with the second one, there were a few people who I knew had a story to tell that I thought would be really interesting and captivating. But I also knew these people, they wanted to write a book, but they did not have the time or did not really have the know-how on writing a book. So I, you know, kind of had that conversation like this is that stepping stone. You might not be able to write an entire book, but you can start your story somewhere and it will still be in a book. So with the immigrant one, it was really interesting for me to get voices of people who were really from different regions so that we can kind of have an understanding of one, the cultural differences that make Canada what it is. And two, the fact that even though you're from different regions, a lot of times your stories and your hurdles can be the same. And it's just what you do with it at the end of it all. That's really powerful. Powerful because we were asked the question, what are the common challenges? And there's three. And there's how many hundreds of thousands of small businesses, and if not close to a million, I think it is, small businesses in Canada. And yet there's three things that they face. And here you are take, applying sort of the same um, logic, at least for logic, where, you know, no matter where you immigrated from around the world coming into Canada, there's going to be some common experiences that you may have or shared experiences that you may have, but also inspiration from how each woman approached her journey and tackled her challenges and came through success on the other side. Yes, yes. And even the thought process of a lot of people thinking that they really don't have a story to tell or their story is just not as interesting. Nobody will want to hear about it unless you've gone through some huge tragedy. Like, no, 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 no. Tragedy is not meant for everyone. Let's not do that. <laughs> okay. We're going to say that one more time. Tragedy is not meant for everyone. It's not the fundamental basis of a good story. It isn't. I like feel good stories. I mean, fun thing. I gave up on reading books after university. <laughs> I vowed I would never read <laughs> again. And then I started back reading last year because I always loved reading. I was that girl who was always at the library, always in the library. I went to library summer school in Jamaica, let me tell you that. Cool. So now I'm a part of two big book clubs, kind of, sort of three. And I've been reading a lot. Like I'm listening to an audio book and I have two books packed for my holiday right now. I'm reading a lot. So when I'm choosing books to read, I love some of those feel good stories. Like you can still get inspiration from them. You don't have to only get inspiration from tragedy. Yeah. Actually, can I give an example on that? So um, I love murder mysteries. It's my, it's my genre. And, uh, and I've read almost all the Agatha Christie's. Oh, wow. I think I've got like two or three left. Yeah, I'm a little obsessed. It may be this section like right here. But anyway, so, <laughs> so one of the things that um, has really sort of come out of that, my spouse was looking to get me a new book. And he has been unsuccessful in the past where he was so excited he found me a new book it's related to murder mystery only to discover afterwards literally every time i've already owned and read the book and gave it away to somebody so this time he really researched thoroughly and he was convinced he found me a book i had never read and he was right and what i found really interesting is the style of writing so agatha christie is murder mystery it's not like there's not like literally trauma in the book yeah so somebody dies <laughs> But there's something about her characters, and her characters can be very um, robust. They can have a lot of depth to them, but there's a gentleness in the way she approaches them. And this new book, I'm super excited to finish reading it, but I had to take a pause on it because I'm only like on page 30 out of, you know, pretty thick book. And already it's so edgy, and she's created so much conflict in her surroundings that I was like, oh, I just... I can't, I, again, I need the mental fortitude to read this book. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm sure it's fine. But, but there's, there's, um, it's almost too real. There's not a softness to it. So that feel good story. Sometimes you just want to be on a journey yeah. and you want to be in your imagination and you want to be inspired. You don't necessarily need to, and, and there's lots of reasons why you would and lots of great outcomes, but sometimes you just want 
to to be gentle with a book. Yeah, just have a little zen relax time where you don't feel like you have to keep up and it's just not as close to reality as you're, you're trying to escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. And so that leads us to your journey. So, but before we get there, tell me a little bit about for those two first books, we talked about what your inspiration was, but how did it translate to the business for you? Well, <laughs> you know, business was a little slow then because we were going through a little thing that we don't want to mention anymore. And um, I, the book was really good in that one. Oops, my ears are very small, everyone, and I'm trying to use um, little headphones so they fall out. Apologies. Yeah, so, you know, it's a really good business resource because you can use a book for a lot of things. One, yes, direct book sales are great, right? Because you can always promote a book, you can sell a book. But the, a lot of the people really relate to stories. So the fact of the matter is, is I'm here speaking to Brooke about a book writing process. I'm here speaking about the fact that there is a book. And if I didn't have this book, I wouldn't have this opportunity to talk about this subject matter. So you can either be in the book and talk about the contents of the book and use it as a promotional tool for you, your business, get yourself on stages, get yourself on platforms like these, or you can use it as a direct sales um, mechanism. Or you can also use it because I do like using, I, I like when people actually email me who are like in a book club and they want to read my book. That kind of stuff is really cool to me. That is, that is awesome. I love that. <laughs> love that. Yeah. And you can use it as an add-on with a lot of things that you do. If you are in out there in the speaking world, that can be an added bonus to use when you're speaking at an event. You know, everyone at the event can get signed copies of your book and that could be padded onto whatever your speaking fee is. Nice. It's a great sales mechanism. Oh, I love, love that. I love this idea. I love that you're like just generating ideas as you go. I know you, this is fabulous. Okay, so that's how you use the first two books, which were more of a compilation curated stories. And then, you decided to tell your own story, mm -hmm. some courage, mm -hmm. some bravery, some discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, it was not an easy decision, but I can tell you, I was very happy that I did it. I'm still nervous. I'm very happy because going, while I was going, going through treatment, I was documenting things for a couple of reasons. I didn't know what I would want to do with what I was documenting. So I decided to just write what my days would be. It was also a way to, you know, keep me busy. Again, I was never a journaler. I don't journal, not my thing, but I decided I would document. And I did day to day for quite some time. And then I started doing week to week because my days were becoming the same every day. Right. <laughs> and then after the fact, you know, I said, I would like to be able to help other people because I felt going through cancer, especially as a black Jamaican woman, it seemed to be something that's so hush hush still. And I'm like, come on, we have to talk about these things. And if there's a way for me to share what I've been through to make it easier for someone to have that conversation, that's what I wanted to do. Because cancer back in the days of our grandparents is not the same now. It is not a death sentence. And I wanted people to see how my mood was, how everything was, how I looked at every day as I went through it, that it's not the end of the world. Tomorrow is another day, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the other part, Part of it was really helpful at the end because I kid you not, Brooke, during the writing process or the editing process, I 
did not remember probably half of the things that were written. I did not remember going through it. No. So it served as a memory for me because chemo fog is a real thing. They did tell me I was going to forget a lot. My memory's not, it wasn't good before. <laughs> it's even worse now. So even as the book is finished right now, there are still moments in the book where I can't piece together the person who I'm referencing. I still don't know. <laughs> wow. Okay, so yeah. not only was it a form of, you know, I don't want to use the word therapy, but it was it was a comfort. It was something to keep you occupied. It was in its own way an escape to, to sort of write. And then later because you don't know that your memory isn't with you in the moment this is one of the challenges with fogs mm -hmm. but then later to come back and reread all of these memoirs that you had written for yourself and realize that the person who had written them you have no recollection even though it was you yeah yeah wow. and even like you know i would talk about having lunch or dinner with someone i'm like who is this someone I truly can't remember. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. There's wow. still two instances in the book where I still can't identify the person. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. So if, yeah. you, if you've read the book and you recognize that dinner date, call her. <laughs> Let me know. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you mentioned a writing process. You mentioned an editing process. You had to pick a title. I remember all of your stories when you were picking the imagery. So tell me a little bit more about the process, not just your emotional process, because that's hard and you shared that with us, but the actual structure process of writing a book. So for this one, it was a little different, right? Because I've never written a book before and I, I did say I don't even like writing emails. So what I started with was thinking about what, what is the purpose? What do I really want to come from this? And like I said, I didn't want it to be a sad story. I wanted to be lighthearted, but I also wanted to have the facts i wanted i don't want it to be like a journal either because i mean my background's in chemistry i don't like writing technical papers <laughs> so totally get that. i don't like it <laughs> so i wanted it to be something that it's an easy read a quick read someone who either is going through it or knows a family member or a friend who's going with it can read it and have an idea of what they could be going through and have an idea of all the little things that you probably don't know or hear about. I mean, I talked about a lot of things. So there was that. Then I sat and I said, I wanted everyone to not just, if the story's not just about me and breast cancer. I want people to get to know what makes me me and what made me go through the process with the mindset that I had. So I had to start from childhood, right? So there's a bit of back and forth in each chapter where it starts with some component of my childhood, and then it relates to some component in what would be the present of me going through um, the whole cancer treatment process. So I sat down and outlined, you know, like the things I wanted to talk about. So, you know, talk about the diagnosis, the um, lumpectomy, the surgery, the chemo, radiation, what comes after that? And then in each component, it's, okay, what do I want to talk about in my early life that's going to lead them on this journey of, you know, what's going on in the present? So that was the first thing. And then I pooled all my notes and threw everything together. And because I'm not a great writer, I found someone who was an amazing writer and editor. And we had meetings, like, I scheduled meetings probably two to three times a week where we would sit on Zoom together. Actually, the first two meetings were in person and we sat in a room together and put the story up and started at the first, first word. And we read each line together and we would sit back and go, okay, how can we paint a picture because that's the part I know that I'm not great with. I can lay out the facts, but how do I paint a picture so that you're in it? And we kind of went back and forth from start to finish every paragraph. How do we make this sound a little bit better? What can we relate this to from previously? And then there were certain things that we kept repeating, repeating, repeating in the book, and that helped us come up with the title as well. 
Oh, very cool. Okay, the other piece that I really love, I love that you brought in help. Oh, yeah. Right, you didn't write this and feel blocked. You didn't write it and feel like you had to do it all. You brought in literally an expert. And then the other piece is the amount of dedication. So for those of you who are thinking about writing a book, listen to that because it was notes at the beginning, the planning mm -hmm. process, the typing out all mm -hmm. the words, and then literally two to three meetings a week. And how long did that go on for? That went on for probably about three months because I was on, I had initially wanted to release this book October of 2022. And I didn't. Then I said, you know what? I had to do it. I wanted to do it May. And then I said, no, 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 no. Just not rush it October because October is a big deal for me. Not only is it Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but it's my birth day month and I love my birthday and it was also important for me on that part, a particular day in October which was October 16th because that was the date of my first chemo appointment oh wow wow yes so everything was around October so the other thing to think of is what is going to be surrounding your release? What is going to make people want to be like, oh, this matters to me in this moment? Because it will matter to a lot of people because they know me, but not everybody who knows me is buying a book. And that's just the honest truth. That's yeah. fine. But what about the people who don't know me? It has to mean something to them. Okay, so timing, what's happening around you during that time? What makes it meaningful to you? Because um, we actually had um we've had a guest on in the past and she asked a really good question why you why now right which i yep. i love that because it sometimes it's why you but then also it's like what prompted it to be like right now and that was actually yep. kanisha who you introduced ah. me to and yeah yes. ah! and and so i think there's a lot of value in that because you're starting to think about how am i going to market the book because it's fabulous mm -hmm. for people who know you to be able to buy the book to show their support to learn more about you but i mean at the end of the day if you want to sort of garner sales you want people who don't know you buying the book so yeah. have you what were some of the things that you were thinking about in terms of that like i'll call it an outreach plan the the beyond beyond your circle well, you know what's funny? I had a, something written on my, I don't usually do vision boards, but I did one in Canva and it's my, um, what do you call it? The desktop, um, not oh. the screen server, like my desktop yeah, thing. I background. put it there because you see it every, you see it every time, right? Nice. And I said, I wrote book clubs on there because I wanted my book to be a part of book clubs. So part of the things that I did was because I know, I mean, I am Jamaican, that's where I was born and bred. I have a lot of Jamaican references in my book. I also want to make sure that I can market my book in Jamaica. And it's a no brainer, I should, right? So I made sure I had an idea of places or organizations that I want to get in touch with when I'm ready to market in Jamaica. The same goes for Canada because yes, I can try to market through different cancer programming, but I also want to market through my alma maters because I give my time to them. I am a good alumni. So, you know, how can I also use that? Think about all the organizations you're a part of. How can they help you? I have friends who might be involved in certain organizations and they want to make sure they talk to people from other organizations. But I also have like a stack of books that I know, okay, I want to give these away. So for example, I have been doing some outreach because like I said, I am traveling. I'm doing the first stop of the book tour is going to be in Dubai next week on Sunday. Um, but I'm also going to Sri Lanka and I would like to reach out to a couple of organizations there and give them a copy of the book so that they can have it in their library there. So it's something that women can reference and read. Nice. Because again, that's part of why I want the book because I want people who are going through it to be able to read it and have some sense of comfort. So it's not just about social media blasts. I'm doing things behind the scenes with organizations and also planning on October's coming up. What can I do in October that's going to also help shine a light on the book? And I'm also doing something in February possibly 
because you know valentine's day don't just love your breasts in october you can love them in february too i love that i love that <laughs> okay so did you do a book tour for the first two books no i didn't because it was during that ponder replay that we won't talk about <laughs> Remember that was released back then. So there was no book tour. We wanted to do a whole gathering of all the authors, but yeah, all that happened during that time that we will not speak of. <laughs> mm, yes, I mean, we couldn't get together. So yes. but interesting. And so, so for this one, you are doing a book tour. And then the other piece that I, I wanna point out was I think this sometimes get missed. There's so much focus on social media. And if I had to have this conversation this, uh, just this morning um, with an entrepreneur and she was saying, you know, I was like, oh, this is so brilliant. You should share about this. And she's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I have a book about that. And, and just that feeling of self-promotion was just like so yuck. And, and so the idea of the book tour, um, super comfortable speaking, but not really like holistically bringing all of it together. And so I love that this time around, you are doing a book tour, but more importantly, you're doing this personal outreach, sometimes at an organization where you may not have a direct contact, mm -hmm. sometimes to people where it's a relationship that you've already cultivated and, and established mm -hmm. and someone who knows you and you know them. But you've really thought through the, I'll, I'll say not just the approach, but the situational circumstances of where your book might be relevant and why it would be relevant to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's also important to me to recognize the fact that a lot of the support that I got through Trillium Health Partners, they were very thorough and I got a lot of information. But a lot of support I got was because of people who were probably like me who shared their stories. Because, you know, every day when I would go in, it's how do you feel today? And you have a list, you have a number that you circle, depending on one to 10, how you feel, what is wrong with you, all this, all this data that's collected is what's able to help people like me. So when I'm putting all this information in the book of how I'm feeling and all the extra things that you don't think about, like, you know, it hurt, my body was swollen so much that I couldn't even walk half of the block without my legs literally feeling like they were on fire. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. these are things that you don't hear about because people don't talk about it, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? So it's me trying to find these, especially grassroots organizations that are really trying to help women in remote areas. Like when I went to Jamaica in October after I released the book, fate had it that the resort I stayed at in Treasure Beach the lady who owns the resort went through breast cancer in 2018 and she started an organization in the rural area of jamaica to try to help rural women you know make them be more informed hey i see, oh i'm sorry i see carlina i haven't seen you in a while hey car <laughs> um trying to help women in the rural areas of jamaica go to the doctor, get checked, try to help those who have been diagnosed with breast cancer to go and get, you know, see what services are available. So these are the people, like she got the very first copy of my book. Amazing, amazing. And and I think, it, you know, it's, it's so, oh, we've got a beautiful comment here from, I think it's Magna. Uh, good luck with the new book and success with your book tour. I oh. love it. Carson, hello back. Um, I think one of the things that you're bringing up, though, is that, you know, there can be really robust information. There can be thorough information about what to expect, how to negotiate and how to navigate the medical system. But there's a lot of that detail that doesn't get captured because it's so personal. Right. I think mm -hmm. of a very good friend of mine who shared she was she was afraid to go. She knew she knew in, in her self mm -hmm. and she just couldn't face hearing it and having it confirmed and she i remember she used to talk about the metallic taste mm -hmm. and how she, she missed just food and it's you know but it's these things that you you hear that there's um side effects and symptoms but you don't mm -hmm. know there's no personalized context yeah 
everything tasted like granulated cardboard. I say that a lot in the book because I love to eat. Everything tasted like granulated cardboard. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's important, right? And, and so I just want to say thank you because I know it takes a lot of, a lot of um, gumption, a lot of like personal choice um, and a lot of personal sacrifice to go back and relive all of that to document it. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was a, a bit emotional when I saw the book and got the book, but can I tell you something? Do yeah. you know what was really emotional for me? Tell me. After, so right before the book was re released, because the first week of October is the breast cancer walk. Yeah. And I haven't been to a walk like at the location since 2019 when I was first diagnosed. And I went to the one in Toronto and it was at um, Nathan Phillips Square. And, and my mom and my husband was with me and they didn't even notice because I just kind of held it together. I probably for 30 minutes was so overwhelmed. I mean, I could cry now, but I'm not gonna do it, okay? No, because don't I was so get me started. I'm already like trying to hold it off. Overwhelmed <laughs> because it's like partly look at all these pe people who are here to support and partly, oh my gosh, I'm about to share a whole story, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, it was, that was overwhelming to me, but I also, I am interested to start getting feedback from the book when people start reading it and letting me know, like I've gotten a couple feedbacks already. So I'm interested for people to tell me their honest feedback. There, there is a book club that's reading my book for February. <laughs> so I'm interested to hear, I'm going to speak there. I'm interested to hear how that goes. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. I mean, this is awesome. This is what you, what I love is that you envisioned it. Literally, you like designed it in Canva and put it on your computer, <laughs> your background. <laughs> yeah. And every day you visualize that there would be women who are interested in reading your book as part of their book club. And then how do you come as a speaker? And now Ooh. it's I literally, they talk about manifestation, but it's happening. Yeah. And it's happening not just by chance and not just because you thought about it. It's happening because you put in the beautiful work of outreach and being yeah. intentional. And even my book is available in a bookstore in Jamaica, in two locations of one of the largest pharmacy chains in the country. My book is in two locations. I haven't, you'll see some stuff because I have decided that the promos are really going to start this year because that's when I'm actually physically going to be going out to do things. So we'll see all that going and it's 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 amazing because even if i was speaking to a friend of mine she is in florida and she's like hey did you know i can buy your book online at walmart and target i was like no i did not <laughs> okay wow no did, kind of, did you go through self-publishing again or were you able to connect with a publisher no i went through balboa press i have my pluses and minuses for that um balboa press is great in terms of distribution but it's kind of difficult when it comes to canada um so I would I would rethink that if I did it again or when I do it again. Hey, sure, I'm sure I'm here. So yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. What other things did you want to share? We've got just a few minutes left together. Um, you know, if you're thinking about writing a book, just start writing anywhere. Get a Google Doc and just start writing. You have to start. You don't have to have the publishers and everything lined up just yet. Just start documenting things because then at least you'll feel like you're a step ahead when you're ready to actually sign the dotted line and say, hey, I want to do it. And, you know, the title, the book cover doesn't matter as much as the marketing of the book. <laughs> you have to make sure you have a plan for it. And I'm excited because I haven't, I can say it first here. Hmm, I wonder if I should. Um, <laughs> you know, I've been telling everyone to save the date for the Amplify Your Voice conference, and I haven't really released the theme or anything, but 
It might be around this a little okay. bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, Those of you don't know, Am Amplify Your Voice is an in-person conference that is absolutely spectacular. The venue, the food, the level of detail, but more importantly, the speakers. So last year is Amplify Your Voice, literally about storytelling and speaking. Mm -hmm. And there was an incredible panel, some amazing keynotes. Absolutely loved the workshop with Gabby. The The whole thing from beginning to end, I will always remember the scissors and the cucumber. And it's one of those things where, yes, if you were there and you know, you know, but also just really impactful uh, and in, an amazing way to come together with women, which is how uh, we mentioned Kamisha, who's a past guest on the show. And we carpooled together, which was super fun because we came from Hamilton to Mississauga. If you're in the GTA, that means something to you. If you're not, it's somewhere in Ontario in the middle of Canada. So <laughs> it was an absolute blast. We had so much fun and I'm super excited to join you again there. This year. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I will be doing that. But, you know, until then, I will be doing the first stop of my tour in Dubai. It'll be in the show notes. Um, no, it'll be on yeah. 100%. And the thing that I'm really excited about, you know, as we sort of wrap this up, you talked about sort of that advice, have a marketing plan, make sure that you've got, you know, sort of this, this vision for how you're going to do the outreach beyond your circle. Is there any other advice that you would give to someone who has been brave and written the book and are now being out there and doing their promotion? Um, be intentional like don't feel like you have to dance around what you want to use the book for lay out exactly what you want from it and be intentional reach out to the people you want to reach out to you'd be surprised the amount of people I've DM'd like hey I have this book <laughs> this is what I like to do can I send you a copy you know can you like do, I want you to read it and tell me what you think and be creative with it it doesn't just have to be used as a, here's a book, you know, <laughs> read it. Yeah. What can you, what, what add-ons can you have with the book? Like, is there something that you can use it for, like, some kind of workshop? What can you do with it, you know? Be creative, but don't hide your hand. Like, it's there to be read. Oh, use it. oh I love that. Don't hide your hand. It, really valuable for it, no matter what you're doing that's promotional and intentional to really just say specifically because people are not mind readers mm -hmm. they're not going to intuitively understand what you're asking for you got to be really clear yeah. in your ask yeah definitely definitely I and that. i mean talk about your book all, all the time i mean i'm going to be talking about it all year you're going to be sick of me I look forward to it. <laughs> absolutely look forward to it doing you thank you for coming thank Thank you for having me, Brooke. We need to make a lunch we date. Will. I know. We keep saying that. We actually <laughs> never have. We just talk about it and then we don't. We do this instead, which is perfect. But my friend, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on to talk about your journey, to talk about the structure, to give so much detail. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. And make sure you drop some uh, questions in the chat. I'll be looking back and I'll go in and I'll answer I some mean questions. Amazing. And definitely check the chat because Dwayne is going to be dropping all the links and all the places where you can buy her book and where you can find her to get it signed. <laughs> Have a great <laughs> night, everyone. Thanks so much. Bye. -bye. Bye.